I'm Stumpy Nubs and this is Mustache Mike. Together we're building two very different workshops. One will be full of the best commercial machines we can get our hands on. The other will be full of homemade woodworking machines and tools. I hope you learned something from our workshop blog. We've been installing new ductwork in the main workshop. We used to use metal stovepipe. The stuff is just too leaky unless you completely mummify it in tape or sealer. I just got tired of it and ripped the stuff out. Now I'm spending a small fortune on 6 inch PVC pipe. It's not the pipe that gets you, it's the stinking fittings. $20 for an elbow, $30 for a Y, it's ridiculous. But the cyclone needs 6 inch ductwork, so here I am. I suppose I could be a little more careful about cutting all my ends straight, but at this point, I just don't care. I also use this big saw for slicing bread. I tape all of my seams, no glue. I've learned the hard way that I need the ability to change things around later. Even though I hang this stuff with plastic straps, sometimes I need a hand while I'm getting everything in place. The shelf brackets are a good temporary solution. I never use duct tape on duct work. Foil tape seems to last longer, but there's a trick to attaching it when you can't get your hand behind the duct. I peel the backing halfway down, then I slip the end behind the duct into that tight space by the wall. After I stick the exposed part down, I reach under and grab the loose end of the backing and pull downward, exposing the rest of the tape. It's actually easier to apply than duct tape is. I was wondering how I would attach 6 inch flex hose to 6 inch PVC pipe, but if you bevel the edges on a sander, then 6 inch hose will slip over a 6 inch sewer grade PVC. It's tight, but it fits. Of course I also add some screws to keep it there, and some tape just in case. My work was interrupted by a delivery, oh what could it be? I love deliveries. I don't love moving heavy boxes by myself, but it does give me a chance to see how well things are packed. Looks like I could have dropped this thing off the roof. Look at all these peanuts. It's got more peanuts than, um, I don't know any good peanut jokes. Looks like there is something under here though. It's a brand new CNC shark from Next Wave Automation. No wonder it was so heavy. It's built like a tank. This must be the electronic y doodads in here. It looks like it comes mostly assembled. That's a relief. I don't mind putting some things together, but I mean, come on. I want to get to routing. Mustache Mike got a delivery of his own over at the other shop. This is the CNC machine from Inventables, the Creative Carve, and it takes a little more assembly. Fortunately, the stash is pretty good at that kind of thing. He was into radios and stuff, you know, back before TVs were invented. I've seen some people post online that they got their X Carve together in like a couple hours which is proof that they're really awesome. This one is going on a torsion box bench, which is a fancy way for making a bench a lot heavier than it needs to be. In the main workshop, I'm making my bench much simpler. With some 2x4s and some pocket screws. This may not seem that strong, but I mean, it only has to hold like a 400 pound CNC machine. Honestly though, I could stand on this thing and I'm like 1200 pounds at least. Having a CNC machine in both shops is going to give us the chance to do some really cool projects. But right now, we just got to get these remodels done. See you next time.